think you just have to go into a gallery and look at modern art. I think you just open your eyes to what artists create. Their perception of the world is guided um, through their eyes, but also through an understanding of what they see and beyond what they see. And I think there's something to that. Um, Carlos Castaneda, I loved Carlos Castaneda. I, I read all his books and... Uh, I don't know where that guy was coming from, but it, it opens your eyes to a different way of seeing the world and a different uh, perception of intention and, and how we can guide things. And, and, and this week, on a personal level, I've been involved in being a prophet of all things, and it was the last thing I could possibly have thought to be. But it's shaken me to the core to think that you you can somehow tune into something greater than what you see and and something comes out of that that's productive and creative and real and uh, like I said just walk into an art gallery it's right there I've, I've got a, I've got a tec um, uh, text here and it says during some it does, I don't know who it's from she doesn't or he doesn't say during some accidental astral traveling I met a triangular being who said after touching me that she has raised my frequency what do you think of that is that do you think maybe that some some of these you know, other dimensional or alien beings are guiding us in a, in a way, perhaps? I think, um, if from a, from a scientific viewpoint, I think that the understanding we have from quantum physics and from string theory makes us realise that the numbers of dimensions that the universe is made of, the fabric of the universe, is so much more complex than we work within our normal realm. Those dimensions are quite capable of introducing to us phenomena that has meaning, context, and shapes our lives, and that we can interact with. And it's just, you know, the potential there, yes, I agree. I think there is great potential. I think there is potential for spiritual awakening, for people to receive messages, to float on the collective unconscious, to perceive things that are paranormal and beyond the normal world that we understand. So I, I wouldn't poo-poo that at all. Are there prophets that we should follow? I hope to God no one tries to follow me as a prophet after what's happened this week. <laughs> because I, I've just written a novel and, and the direction it takes, although it's starting to come true this week, the direction it takes is is pretty strange and confused. But well, well, isn't that interesting? I mean, you told me about this earlier. Do, would you like to tell me again about that, about what happened with this novel? The, the novel I wrote a year ago is called Ezekiel One, and the, 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 the very title denotes prophecy. And um, because Ezekiel is, a, is an Old Testament visionary and prophet. But the, the story that I'm, I'm conjuring up is a way of introducing a lot of what I've talked about tonight in a sort of easier format. But one of the characters, I produce a conspiracy thriller, and one of the characters in Ezekiel One is a called Mr. Provotkin. And he's a Russian oligarch who owns the London newspaper, The Daily Standard. Now, I wrote this a year ago, and this week news broke that the London Evening Standard, which my which story is, is largely based upon, yeah. although I changed the title to stop them from suing me, um, is being taken over by one Alexander Lebedev, who is indeed a Russian oligarch, a billionaire, and the, um, an ex-KGB Intelligence agent or foreign intelligence agent. So, the, the, you know... Well, we did a program about true. freedom of the press last week where we talked about him, actually. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm stunned because this idea, there was no reason particularly the, the context of the story I needed to introduce this. It's just something that came into my head. I put it into the story. It worked within the story. He's a particularly powerful figure in the story. He can manipulate the situation. He's, he's got an agenda. He comes across as being someone who's very, very tuned into security and intelligence. And this is just Lebedev. 